This playthrough is rated E10+. Plus. Greetings and salutations, viewers. Waldo right back here with another episode of Shiny Force CD. In the last episode, with Gordon, with uh, that random voice telling us that Nick has been captured, we head to Portobello to see if that's true. And unfortunately, after defeating the enemies there, we found out it is true. So we need to take Eom's boat. We're going to steal your boat like pirates and uh, head on to sea to chase after Nick and hopefully we can save them before Gordon knows what. I mean, we saw at the beginning of Book 2 them sacrificing that one king to Eom, so why not Nick? But hopefully that won't be the case. But anyway, let's uh, take care of that stuff we got in the last episode, which is probably equipped in that steel sword. Oh, right, I forgot to show the power difference. Yeah, about four points, nice. Um, you're already pretty pretty powerful, uh, Dina, but hey, you can always be more powerful. Oh yeah, already right, right. pretty Zero. Um, I think the only thing is the quick ring. Who do I want to give that to? I don't know. Jaws agility is already pretty good. Might actually Don's been pretty slow. Maybe I should give it to her. Oh yeah, uh, Slade would benefit from it because you always need your healers to be able to kind of move quickly. So yeah, we'll go ahead and, for now. We'll give it to Slade. Um, Slater, Slater, Luke would be would be good. I think just like I said, being able to go faster. Although, another way to do it would be to give it to your, uh, one of your front life fighters. Not just that, make them go faster, but, um, slightly, but they'd also have higher chances of counterattacking, um, with that. So, yeah, I raised it by five. Oh, I thought it was four for some reason. Anyway, yeah, beat goes up by five, so we'll be able to at least kind of keep in the general range of everyone, so. I don't think, I think everything in the shop is the same. I don't think we get anything new. And sell those up. Those two, the longsword. Be gone, longsword. You're too long for this world. And the steel arrow. Alright. Excellent. Back forth to the port. We must, we must uh, keel haul. Oh, not keel haul. We must, uh, we must take the ship from them. So, anyway, let's look at the map. So, uh, 9, 12, 19, 19 units. Alright, let's look at the treasures. Alright, there's a treasure there that has a new weapon for Jaha. Um, so we need to get that for sure. Then we, there's a chest here for... That has a running pimento, if I recall. And then I think the uh, yeah, uh, new uh, item, uh, Arch, Arch Knight, uh, has a power spear, two power spears. So obviously the power spear is the upgrade for what we've currently got with our centaur, so we'll get one of those when he, drop, when he gets defeated. So make sure whoever kills him has an extra slot. And I think that's it for that. I think it's just three. Yeah, more Pegasus Knights. Uh, yeah, Master Mage. Skeleton with his, uh, the, with the meta blurbs. I said if you can get them to drop it, great. If not, then don't worry about it. Um, yeah, nothing new other than that. So I guess we'll have to... Oh, I was about to say split for forces, but nope, never mind. You can't do that anyway, so, all right. Uh, for this fight, uh, yeah, same thing with the previous fight. 13, maybe even 14, if you can get it, would be would be good levels for the purposes of not um, keeping up with them and not having to worry too much about your characters dying. I don't, think this, I don't think this fight has any, other than, like, the Master Mages and all this other stuff, I don't think there's anything super complicated about this fight. It's pretty straightforward. And I think it's going to be a bit longer. I think it's not till the next chapter or the chapter... Yeah, I think it is chapter 3 where we start, you know, a bit more dangerous fights or complicated fights anyway. Yeah, just wait for them to go through all their turns. Oh yeah, I was talking about, uh, last episode, I was talking about how, uh, I was talking about something about, uh, like, fantasy stories and stuff like that, or game stories, and I kind of stopped talking about it after a while. The, the, the concept I was going for when I was talking about was the idea of, uh, like, in a previous game, you know, certain characters can hit, like, a certain level, be at a certain strength, and then in the sequel to the story, all of a sudden the heroes from that previous story either get captured, or killed, or whatever. And, you know, it's usually, like, the villain, like, tricks them or whatever. But when you look at it from a mechanic standpoint, it's hard to, like... It's hard to separate the fact that in that previous game, they did all this crazy stuff to get to that point. Either that power or whatever. So it's almost ridiculous that they just somehow get taken out by, like, a weaker enemy or by some tactic when they clearly... Like, like if it happens in a Final Fantasy game or something like that where they beat basically a literal god 
in their own game, and then all of a sudden the sequel, where they fight maybe like a human villain or something like that, they all of a sudden lose, and you're like, wait, what? That doesn't make sense. You know, th that type of mentality. It's, and I get that there's a difference between like game mechanics and story-wise, but it's really hard to like, especially if you played those previous games, to separate the two, like, fr from it. So it's always hard. It, I mean, I, I know what they're trying to do. They're trying to add like, you know, drama, danger, having that. Ah, oh, man. Um, got poison. Uh, and having the next breed of heroes come in, like, otherwise, why would you play those heroes if, they, if they're if they not as good as the previous heroes? You gotta give them, like, like, an, I mean, unfortunately, this game's kind of doing the same thing, where we're playing new characters and we're having to save the old ones. In a realistic story, where there's no game mechanics, so it's just being told from a story standpoint, you know, obviously, that's just one you know, solid D-Net you know, block. Um, you know, everyone's bundled up, could use a Blaze, Blaze 2 right about now, Natasha. Romanov. No, we, we don't have any Black Widows here, but uh, that'd be... Actually, is there? Well, no, I think there are some strategy games. Well, sort of. Um, I was about to say, are there any strategy games with, like, Marvel characters or DC characters? And there technically is. Other than more hack and slash, like, uh... I think in Marvel is, like, Marvel versus... Uh, not Marvel versus Capcom. Is that, like, um... Wait, who? It was Eric, right? But, oh, Luke's right next to him, so. Anyone else can hear? Okay. I mean, not worth, you know, spending like five on it or whatever, so. Yeah, unfortunately, we're kind of in that. Yeah, we'll just have you wreck a hell sniper up. <laughs> At least this at least this game isn't doing the whole um your your new heroes are clearly better than the old heroes or they have to like weaken the old heroes to make the new characters look better. That's like one of my least favorite storytelling plots where you have to you have to like knock down the power or uh, I should just use on this guy because at least I'll get something out of the damage on the hell sniper. But that's like one of my least favorite writing tactics is to make your new character seem awesome. You basically crap on or you make the older characters actually terrible people or something like that just to say, see, my new characters are better because the old ones are actually very terrible or they're nasty or whatever. I'm like, why do you always have to put down other people's favorite characters or other characters to make yours look better? You know, you could tell that, that that's like, no, they're not, they're not do a very good job writing if they have to do that if they can't like make their characters interesting in their own way you know that, that's definitely a challenge for writers trying to um, set up the new generation and, and to like get them to like them out of the old but yeah a lot of times they'll just do the whole the old generation sucks you should like these new characters better I'm like you're gonna piss off a lot of people like the new characters when you do stuff like that so I don't know why I'm using this game as an example. I'm just saying, in general, that's happened before. Luckily, like I said, this game isn't doing that, so it's not like, you know, it's like, oh, we're clearly better than next group, you know? They just, story-wise, they just got ambushed or something like that, and we have to play the people saving them. And that's a legit story. It just, I, don't know, I just brought it up just because of game mechanics and everything like that. But, yeah, if you're an Aspire writer, don't do that, too. If you have to, if you're, like, you're the one who decided to write for the, the, the bring in, like, new heroes and try to get people to like them, don't do the whole, these characters suck or, or bring them down or whatever. Just pass the, just do the pass the torch storyline and make it a legit, don't, uh, you yeah, know, don't do that. You know, you're just gonna alienate people and, uh, and you're gonna look like a bad writer doing it, you know. And I'm not just saying I'm, like, this great writer or anything like that, but there's certain, like, writing tactics and, and techniques you do to like imp like impress upon people to, to uh, ingratiate them to new characters and stuff like that. I feel like a lot of this new generation tends, doesn't know how to do that right or something. I don't know. I mean, it's not all writers, obviously, but uh, I, I've, no I've noticed it's been a trend on a lot of young writers, I guess should be the word. Not all of them do that, obviously, but it's it's... I, I, I've sensed a, a general consensus from a lot of them, but that's kind of their... So I don't know if, like, just people aren't just take like, just not reading writing books anymore to, like, kind of get suggestions or reading, like, old school books. They're just kind of, like, writing, and then they think that's... I mean, obviously... Obviously, you don't want books all to be the same, so you have this, like, cookie-cutter, like, this, you know, you do this, this, and this plot. But... 
then again, there are only there are only really seven ideas in the world, and and there's variations on the seven ideas on how to tell a story. But usually, a lot of these books and, and like writing techniques have been written down is because they usually tend to work pretty well. So that's why people tend to stick with them for the most part, and they just do variations on those techniques. You know, I don't know. Sorry for. Sorry for getting into a writing rant or whatever. I, I know I know so there's a bit unnecessary, but well, when, it, when, it, when some of the fights in the game don't have anything too, when some of the fights in the game don't have too much complication to them, you have to kind of find things to talk about outside of like, oh, the skeleton moves, he does this, da 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 da. It's like we already fought this. So. That's kind of what was the worst thing to happen in a game when you have that that instance of there's what real what is your agility? You haven't boosted yourself, have you? I want to see. What's your agility? 13? It, oh, come on! You shouldn't be dot. Okay, maybe you dodge his attack, but yours is the same. But really, my character? Ugh. At least, it, at least this game hasn't uh, hit uh, Shiny Force 1 levels of, of missing. Each, I guess, or was it one or two? One of the two, like... I swear at the end of the game, I was missing, like, every other character, and it was, it was really skeeving me off. I think it was one, actually. Oh, wow, I, I forgot they got freeze level three, but we're not gonna cast that right now. Unnecessary. Boom. Must be slightly weak to ice. Because you took 10 damage instead of the usual, like, seven. Ow. That hurt. I shall defeat you with my powers of, of, uh, of spear, or I guess lance in this case. It's kind of weird how I'm talking about like story stuff based on a, uh, you know, a video game story, which most video game stories, for the most part, are okay, but they're very few of them are, are ever something to scream home about. If they are, they're usually like weird indie titles or or epic RPGs or, or something like that. But uh, I mean, like the, the the story for this is serviceable because I mean you have to. It's usually like. Gameplay mechan I mean, for a game, gameplay mechanics should always be the most important part, and then anything after that, um, just to just to t keep players in there, because because um, you could have a game with a great story, and if, if the gameplay or whatever surrounding it is not very good, most people will not stick around long enough to see this awesome story you've written. You know, I've seen quite a few games that have like pretty interesting plots, but because the game mechanics were either really poor. Or lacking, or or whatever. I didn't really care enough to stay uh, to see the rest of it. You know. I mean, I too, t I tend to most times try to finish any game I play, even if I'm not not very interested in it, uh, because uh, what's that called? Like the is it the sunken cost concept? I fall for that like often, where I put so much time and energy into something that I'll I have to finish it, even if it's not that interesting. I mean, there are a few games I've, I've skipped ship on, uh, either because I was younger or I had too many other projects going on or whatever, but uh, but most cases I try to finish what I start, which I, I kind of wish I did, you know, because like I said, there's so many things out there that are just like either so boring or so uninteresting that you're just like, oh, why am I still sticking with this? It's not rewarding me for my, for my loyalty. And no, I'm not talking about this game specifically. Um, I'm just talking about how this fight particularly is not is not ga engaged my uh, like danger senses or something where I like I must put, I must put like 110 percent of my concentration onto this title or this battle, you know. I'm just trying to remember the last game or or book or thing that I I, I read that I decided to check out on that I didn't finish. There there are I'm just trying to really trying to recall. I think there were some games I rented um, a while back that I I never did recordings for, but I think I remember um, not finishing them because I, I just I almost did that with that. Uh, I think I've I think I've already uploaded that by the time I've recorded this. Uh, I almost did that with like the werewolf <laughs> game. I that game was just so was just so mad. I just didn't really want to finish the story, but I went ahead and finished it and 100% of the trophy on it. Because I figured it, I found out it was really easy to do. But man, I was just like, 
I was just like, I don't care. <laughs> I think it was because the gameplay was kind of lacking. Like, some of the story elements behind it, like, the character designs were interesting, and the story elements were interesting, like, in the background, but the gameplay just wasn't enticing enough, and it was a hack and slash, like, uh, or, well, no, I was about to say beat him up, that's not technically beat him up, but it was, you know, it was a, it was a, you know, hack and slash-ish type of game with some stealth elements, but those can get really boring really quick if you don't do something interesting with them, either by leveling up your characters or, or, you know, introducing new mechanics slowly throughout the game, um, to do that, but I still finished it, despite my intentions. I'm trying to think, uh... Oh, let me, let's go and grab that, and we can give, uh, yep, the battle axe, we can give that to Jaha, so he can become a beast. I mean, he's already pretty strong. Jaha, if I recall, gets pretty, pretty, pretty egregious later on in the, in the game, like, just in terms of damage and attack power and everything like that, although usually warriors tend to in the first place, but I think I remember Jaha getting pretty, pretty toasty later on. <laughs> Like, just in terms of his uh, growth and everything like that. Next, obviously, like, the main hero. Yeah, yeah, not close enough. Oh, well. Uh, oh, yeah, we got, oh, yeah, we're in Master Mage territory, so we'll have to do the whole checkerboard pattern so we don't have everyone get hit with the, with the, uh, you know, That would be a waste of it. I could always hit him with, uh... Ram. That would be up there, Grunna. Nah, I didn't need to get those metal orbs. So that's fine. No, I need that 10 GP worth of items! Or 20 GP, something like that. <laughs> Let Don take the, take the brunt. Ooh, that's what a critical hit gets you? Don, you need to work on your, uh... Your, your exceptional skills. So I like the robin arrows and everything like that just because of the range you get from, from Ooh, nice. And everyone's leveled up. Wow, that was a very good level. I was about to say, everyone's leveling up pretty nice, and then... Or just leveling in general, and then he gets, like, only, like, one or two stat bumps and whatever. At least it's not like... At least it's not like Fire Emblem, where some, some characters don't even get a... Why'd you attack me? Wow. Um, it's not like Fire Emblem where some characters can have dead levels where they get nothing. That is, you almost want to reset when something like that happens because that is not good in a Fire Emblem game. Although you can, ten well, depending on which Fire Emblem game you get, technically later games in the series, they can kind of level up as, uh, to like a super high level. But uh, in early Fire Emblem games, if you're a, if your character got a dead level, either you were either going to reset it or or just drop that character like a, a, a sack of rocks because that's like no good. I mean, usually the percentages of getting a dead level in that game were pretty are pretty low, but it could happen. Right, let's give you the battle axe. Uh, I don't want to. I was like, I didn't want to move characters together. You know? Just because of the Master Mage has not been dealt with. Although he might be dealt with here pretty soon. Yeah, I'm just going to finish him off. I'm not going to do, like, any weird, like, level. Oh, come on. Finish him off already. Yeah, might as well do that. Uh, if I do freeze level 3, she's not going to be able to cast one more spell. Yeah, you know. Well, actually, the... Now nah, we'll just do freeze level two, just because the skeleton does take my thing anyway. Yeah, so. Let's do some. Yay! Nice. Oh, that was a good level. Okay, now we don't have to worry about checkerboard pattern anymore. So one, one for all, and all for one. Oh, I forgot to equip the. Well, he he was gonna do enough damage anyway, but I was like, I forgot to put this. His axe. I'll have to, I think I'll have Don go get that up. We'll do that here in a second. Maybe you waste your. Uh... Actually, you might not heal with that much damage. I guess we'll find out. Yes, but we need to make sure to get that running fermento. I don't know who to give it to yet. 
I kind of don't want to stack every single... Okay, that wasn't a famous deal. I don't want to stack every single buff on the main character, but... But it, it's always one of those cases where I'm not sure how I want to, like, do my final party. Because, you know, we're spoilers. We're going to get more characters in our group. But I also want to... I'm not sure how I want to divvy out the group until I actually get to that point in the game, you know? Yeah, might as well put the axe. Yeah, nice six. Ooh. Sweet. Now yeah, let's go ahead and get the running pimento. I don't like pimentos. They're rough, of course, and get my no. Wait, that's a, that's sand. I don't like sand. <laughs> uh, good thing I'm not a Jedi or a Sith Lord Master. Oh, brass litter at that uh, at that level gives. Yeah, if you're 13, you get no really no experience from it. Do I have any level 12 dudes? Oh, well. I could have finished them off, but now I let the priest heal them. And the little imp healing. Wouldn't the imp, imp not know healing spells? I don't know. It depends on your franchise and world. That'd be kind of a bad idea for the villains not to have some way to heal themselves. In some worlds, healing is considered a light ability or a good ability. Like some e evil people can't heal people because of, of their displacement or whatever. Um, although in in those game in those worlds where the evil can't heal themselves, they usually can heal themselves via not by healing but by using some undead like magic or something like that. Um, and that's how they that's how they heal themselves. In D and D, it's a uh, um, negative energy heals the undead. Because that's what they were created from, at least in that world. And I'm not sure how it is in this world. Not that we need to know or anything like that. That's a great thing about a lot of fantasies. Like, I don't really need to know how the undead are created in this world. I just need to know that they're, at least for this game's context, I just need to know that they're a threat and can they be beaten type of thing. And it's not like we're diving down into the depths of, like, undead lore, you know. I mean, would there be a game like that? Sure, there'd be... A TV series based off. There was like a show called Zombie about a, a sentient zombie or whatever. And I think there have been some books about that too. Uh, uh, dead, like. I know there's been plenty of books about uh, vampires getting, like. And, you know, kind of figuring themselves out. And, you know, it's just, you know, he'll just heal himself. And we're not really getting much experience from him anyway. So. Um. I'm trying to think of any other, you know, zombies, vampires. And technically, all of the undead I know of are just variations on. I don't think there's. Well, no, I guess there technically has. I was about to say there hasn't been really been many stories about skeletons becoming sentient, but there. I mean, there's a lot of com comedic stories about skeletons becoming sentient. You know, where like Murray from um, Monkey Island is a good example, or oh, what's the what's the guy's name from Planescape? I know it's not Murray, but I, it's been forever since I played Planescape. I don't recall his name. He was also a floating skull head that uh, that helped you uh, on your quest. He was—I think he's voiced by Rob Paulson, if I recall. But anyway, let's be. Oh, uh, do you have? You do not have an extra slot, do you? No, I am not gonna. Well, I, okay. Who has an extra slot? I guess. Yeah. Okay. Well, if you kill him, because we don't want to—we don't want to lose that power spear. I mean, we we could buy one later, but. Yeah, sorry, Jaha, you had two, your inventory was full. I'm not going to lose an item for that. So. Ooh. I don't think there's been a, there, maybe there's been like a manga or story like that on, based around that type of concept or whatever. Because manga and all that crazy, I've done some really silly and outlandish ideas over the years. So, we defeated Eom's army and taken their ship. Heck yeah. Pirate buggered their ship. Yet something's wrong. What do you mean? The boat is not moving. Well, are any of you sailors? I don't think so. What's happening? There's a reason for that. Hmm? Huh? Who said that? Who's there? Who said those words? You villain. What the? Ah, oh, hey, Mayfair. Hey, it's uh, Randolph, right? Rudolph? Randolph? Yeah, it's me, Randolph. I knew you'd come. Hey, all right. Some of the Cypress uh, Shining Force didn't die. Actually, I think those were the only... Because when you, at the beginning of book one, I think Randolph, Claude, and like Yisha, I think, were in the, were the only sprites that were like generic sprites, plus Nick, I think, so that kind of makes sense. Or Sarah? Anyway, Randolph and the Lady Sarah. 
You were at the Prince, right? Yes, but we lost the battle at Elkenfort. Wow, you guys were like level 20 plus. It's insane. Anyway, sorry. Sarah, Claude, and myself escaped. Ah, the, some of the named characters from the previous game. What about everyone else? Did they all die? We'll tell you the rest of the story later. Right now we must get off the ship. Why? It's a ship. I mean, it's not like much you can do about the... Wait! Mayfair? What the? Ah! What the? You never split the party! You never split the party! Nuts. The ship is moving on its own. Oh no! What does this mean for the shiny force? Dina and the shiny force sailed away. What will be awaiting them? What will be their fate? In the end of chapter two, the end. Man, so it was a trap to split the split the shiny force in two. Dina with his group and Natasha with the other group. How will they survive? What will they do on the uh, on the ship without without any seamen? And how will Natasha take control with with being such a, a tepid girl such as herself? Well, you know. We'll find out that in Chapter 3 of Shiny Force CD, we'll finally find out why Natasha has the egress spell. I mean, if you haven't already figured out why, then, then I, I, I feel sorry for you. So thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.